Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we, go, we are going to take a look at jQuery plugins. Uh, just take a look at what they are, uh, what they can do, how we would search for plugins, and some other information as well that might help you uh, when you're going and choosing a plugin to use. Now, obviously, when we have a normal file, for example, uh, I just have index.php open in my browser, We've included jQuery and perhaps an external script if required, however, uh, that's not always necessary. Uh, obviously, the external script just uh, goes ahead and makes sure we don't need to use any JavaScript on this page. Uh, we just include the file. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and actually add to the current jQuery library, there's a list of plugins available on the jQuery.com website. So if we go over to jQuery.com, we can go ahead and click the plugins tab. Um, you can browse uh, here, the main page that comes up is browsing by type. However, let's just go ahead to top plugins uh, and take a look down the list. Now, plugins are essentially built for the purpose of uh, if you have some kind of functionality you need to add to your website, um, however, you're not comfortable with writing it yourself and you need a quick way to implement something, usually visual, into your script. Um, there's a lot of uh, options uh, available in in the form of plugins. So just looking down this list, you can see a few already. Um, we're going to go over and we're going to take a look at the... Let's have a look. Let's find it. Let's just come down the page. Uh, we've got one here called... Uh, where is it gone? Uh, well, I can't find the original one I was looking for, but let's just go for this one here, uh, the uh, Rich Text HTML Editor. Now, once you've found a uh, plugin of your choice, go ahead and read the description. Uh, in this case, this one is still in beta testing, um, so obviously looking out for these kinds of things are important. Now, you'll often find a downloads link, uh, or you can view the uh, the original page that this is from, so it will be perhaps someone's personal blog or something, uh, and then you can go ahead and actually download the plugin. So another way you can do this is to go ahead and uh, just perform a simple Google search for, uh, let's say, jQuery plugins. Uh, just here, we found an article, uh, 30 fantastic new jQuery plugins. Uh, 37 more shocking jQuery plugins and these kinds of results often uh, show you uh, quick demos so they have quick online demos um, as well as linking to the original authors demos as well um, these might also not be listed on the jQuery website so you might find uh, additional query uh, jQuery plugins that have been written by people and just posted on their own personal website for example and the other benefit is you'll get reviews as well so people will be reviewing this plugin and giving it a uh, a bit of a rating so they would probably give it some kind of rating um, as well as that obviously the titles just go to show that they've collected together um, a good um, a, you know a good collection of plugins to show to a user obviously they wouldn't be blogging about it uh, if they weren't very good. So plugins can be implemented into a page once you've downloaded them as you would jQuery, we've already mentioned that briefly uh, and you would do it somewhat uh, similar to how we've done it here but obviously you would always go ahead and read the instructions on the user's website uh, or the plugin description on jQuery.com. Now the majority of the time when server-side processing is required um, PHP will be used because it's such an available and, and easy to, to write language. So if you are downloading plugins, make sure you uh, check if you have any additional files uh, that might use AJAX requests to PHP documents. Uh, so make sure you have a PHP enabled server before you download these uh, or there'll be no use to you. And make sure you're comfortable with using uh, this PHP uh, processing as well. Obviously there are other web development languages that can be used. However, the majority of the time, uh, PHP is the most popular. Uh, another thing to point out is that when you return to, say, jQuery.com, always take a look at the version number as well. We've already noted that this um, re-editor, uh, rich text HTML editor, 
is in beta testing uh, and this will have uh, beta just here so always check back just to see if there's an updated version of a particular plugin this might be for security reasons this might be for functionality reasons it might even be edited or changed to keep up with the uh, jQuery original library so you might see new functions appear um, or if you use a different version of jQuery a more updated version you might see the functionality in the in the plugin disappear because something might have changed so always check back on either the author's website or jQuery.com depending where you uh, got this from uh, just check the latest version now the other thing is if we will return to our text editor if you were to go ahead and install a jQuery plugin for absolutely everything for example there are jQuery plugins that can um, reference or select a text area and limit the input of text and display how many characters are remaining for example now this is relatively easy to do with jQuery alone so a plugin might not be required uh, if you tend to add a lot of plugins to your page you're going to find it's going to bloat your document out with lots of unnecessary code so by implementing too many plugins you might be slowing down your script so it's probably better to only use plugins where the work can't be done uh, any more quickly than you'd be able to do it or that might not work as well so if you're new to jQuery you probably might feel the temptation to go ahead and install a load of plugins and use them from different parts of the website now apart from the downsides that I have uh, mentioned uh, you might get plugin conflicts as well depending on how well the plugins are written um, so they, there are many problems to adding too much JavaScript to a page you're gonna completely decrease the loading time so only look for plugins that you wouldn't be able to write yourself uh, not just saying wouldn't be able to write yourself uh, off the top of your head but try and research different ways to do things before you go and install plugins uh, the example I gave we could create a text area um, and for example say you wanted to limit this to a certain amount of characters uh, this might be called text uh, over in another file you might go and write something like um, text dot um, counter for example or countdown and this might uh, implement some kind of um, system to say allow only 200 characters and count down as the user starts typing now we've already looked at a tutorial in this tutorial series when we where we can do this uh, therefore if you create your own code and go ahead and keep that up to scratch and keep that working well you are minimizing more well you in some cases minimizing the amount of code you require often plugins come with unnecessary styling um, and also if you got if you were going to go ahead and write your own plugins or just include your own function functionality for example in an external JavaScript file you're also able to style this exactly as you want you could come over to a style sheet and style this exa exactly as you want not saying that plugins aren't useful but try to only install plugins where you feel like you wouldn't be able to do um, anything that would produce the same effect so that's a quick introduction on plugins in the next couple of videos we're going to be picking some specific plugins and we're going to be learning how to install them just so we can get uh, to grips with downloading in, in, and installing and implementing plugins so that was a quick introduction on uh, jQuery plugins